Well, without any delay, let me get on board our first guest for today. Joining me is Peter Maguire, CEO of Exam Australia. Uh, I think he's joining in live from Sydney. Good morning, Peter. Good to have you on the show, as always. But, you know, uh, before I come to you for oil prices and where they are headed, I want to get in your thoughts on where the U.S. dollar is, uh, index is headed, given the fact that, you know, we've seen uh, Fitch downgrading U.S. saying that, you know, there's uh, uh, the confidence in uh, the fiscal management has been eroded, given the fact that we saw a recent stalemate in over the debt ceiling, right? So uh, all, yeah. how do you expect U.S. dollar to trend from here, given the fact that we are around that... Uh, 102 mark uh, at the current juncture. Well, good morning, Nandita, and greetings from Sydney. You know, it's been incredibly volatile over the last six or so weeks in the sense of what we've seen with movement. It's it's uh, choppy, and there was a point in time that everyone thought maybe we're going to see back under 100 if the Fed didn't raise rates last week. Well, they did, and we saw what happened since. It's, we've seen three or four central banks meet in the last matter of four, four or five days. That US dollar, I think it'll probably edge up maybe a little bit higher from here, but I feel as though with the Fitch announcement and uh, maybe a little bit of nervousness with trading, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more softness. So, you know, maybe it's going to channel trade 100.5 100 and 100 .5 to 102 would be a fair enough sort of, um, <coughs> pardon me, range in the short term. We've just got to test what we see as far as um, activity from traders. Right. You know, now, uh, let me talk about oil prices. You know, when we met last time and you were here in India, I think oil was trading somewhere around that $73 a barrel mark. And now, of That's course, right. you know, the scene has completely changed given the fact that uh, Brent is around $86, WTI yeah. above 80 And, of course, lots, has, uh, lots have happened given the fact that Saudi has, of course, had announced a, a production cut, which is expected to extend into September. In fact, uh, even there's been a very uh, sharp drawdown in U.S. inventories as well. Uh, so, you know, my question to you, of course, where do you expect oil prices in the very short term? 86, we are already touching now, 1995. And when do you expect that $100 mark to be hit? Anytime soon? Well, I, I saw you and I was sitting with you in your studio four months ago. So we've seen a dramatic move since then. And as you mentioned, $86 for Brent. I think it's probably got $90 going to be knocking on its door very, very quickly. So sometime, naturally, we're at the early stages of of August, we've got a long way to run till the till the end of August. But I think sometime by mid August, I won't be surprised to see a ninety. Does it get to a hundred? Well, I think there's got to be a lot of points to really make it get there. You've got to see um, destruction as far as uh, production, and that would be with maybe something like a hurricane season really start to gain in the in the Gulf of Mexico. You'd have to see possibly geopolitical shocks and uh, maybe one or two other factors coming into play as far as production for a data 100. The next part is, yeah, it seems to be um, moving up and moving up quite quickly, and uh, we've just got to sit here. But traders are enjoying it. It's an exciting market to trade, and uh, many, many, many traders around the world are enjoying it being long. Right. You know, I also want to throw in a question on copper, given the fact that I think copper prices were uh, at a three-month high uh, as well, uh, given the fact that, you know, uh, there are hopes of recovery in China uh, and maybe uh, hopes of a stimulus in China to stimulate demand. Uh, and then there are concerns over, uh, you know, supplies coming in from Chile as well. So would you expect prices to remain elevated going forward? I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think we've seen uh, quite a nice rally over the last week or so with copper and a number of those other base metals. So, yes, that will continue, I think. They were, gave up some of those gains in the last session on the London Metals Exchange, so maybe a little bit of profit-taking we saw. The overall theme coming out of China is, yes, we're looking for some form of uh, stimulus, and we need to stimulate not only internally, but, uh, yeah, get uh, get production up and hopefully that the world is going to start buying finished goods. So there's the first part. As far as production or, or, or uh, supply coming from Chile, yes, there's always concerns there as far as some of those big mines. And uh, it's been an underinvestment for many, many years. So let's hope that they can meet the demands of China. Right. And lastly, uh, thoughts on gold, uh... Uh, headed towards 2000 anytime soon. Uh, it's already at 1984. What are the levels you'll be yeah. watching out for on the yellow metal now? Well, I think, Nandita, it's got, you know, I think its best days are ahead of it over the next five months. So I think that 
uh, we will get to 2200. That's what many of the investment banks are saying as far as the potential this year. So we're five months to run till the end of the year. And I think 2200 is very achievable. So at the moment, let's have a look and see what happens as far as upside. But yeah, I think it's going to be, again, range bound between that 1950 to 2050 until you see something significant to make it happen and to drive it higher. Right, $2,200 on gold. That's the expectation for the next few months. With that, Peter, thanks a lot for taking out time and joining in. I wish we could continue our conversation further, but we're running out of time. Thanks a lot for taking out time and joining in this morning.